Okay. To your floor, please. We are interested okay. in your talk. Yeah, thanks to make this avail make this possible through uh, through Skype this time. Um, maybe this is a glimpse of the future where we'll do these type of conferences in the future, um, but I uh, hopefully not. <laughs> so um, yeah, I will talk about um, uh, ROS on Windows, uh, but mostly I'm actually talking about uh, what Microsoft is doing uh, in the in terms of ROS and uh, where we are right now. So because um, our goal is not only ROS on Windows. Uh, our goal is more like uh, building application for robotics um, together with op our operating systems and other um, tools we are providing through the cloud. So <clears throat> that's why we probably start with, uh, with a very short introduction on what we have done with ROS and uh, where we are coming from. So my name is Gunter Lukman. I'm actually an, a software development engineer um, in in the robotics team, um, so-called hardware innovations team, uh, led by Kira Richardson, and she's probably known very well um, in the robotics community as well. So um, talking about uh, ROS on Windows, um, we actually started uh, ROS on Windows. Um, almost a year ago, or more than a year ago, in uh, September 20, uh, 2018, when we launched um, our ROS version for Windows. Uh, so we are not really talking for ROS for Windows, it's more ROS on Windows, um, because we are enabling ROS on Windows, not so much building a special version for ROS. This is really important to understand. Where we are not really um, building a new operating system for robots, for, for robots based on Windows. We are taking what the community has done so far and enable this on the Windows operating system. And um, this was also the goal uh, or the reason why we actually started this, because we were asked by the community to um, why we cannot just enable ROS on Windows, and um, because we have some requirements in terms of deployment, connectivity, security, and uh, manageability inside our factory lines, and to enable ROS on Windows would make things much, much easier for us to deploy robots in the commercial environment. So that's why we are uh, actually started to look into what is actually what is actually take to take to build ROS and ROS2 on Windows, and also um, have a very easy deployment strategy for these type of robots. Then, so in ROS in, in on the ROSCon 2018, we actually enabled the first version, um, and this um, was almost a complete implementation um, for manipulation and mobile robots. Uh, up to then, we are um, already tested a couple of hundred nodes um, on this operating system, but it was still an experimental release. And then um, at Build 2019, uh, we had a big demo uh, where we officially announced general availability for ROS on Windows, uh, which allows you to basically um, go to the ROS website and has uh, Windows as a um, first party supported um, or native supported uh, platform uh, in ROS on Windows or in ROS. So, but this was not the end. So, because uh, it was not just allowing ROS and uh, making ROS available, it was also important to have tooling around um, updated. So all the build management tool, the installer, um, everything what it needs to actually build robots. Uh, robot. uh, we had a big announcement on um, in July 2019 when we um, um, announced the, um, the visual code extension for ROS. And along the line, uh, we developed the whole end-to-end -end flow 
uh, for developers to build uh, robots on Windows. And um, this is um, this is what we announced on uh, on Roscon, I think last month. So <clears throat> when we uh, when we looked into the nodes, what we enabled, uh, we looked actually actually at the nodes which are most used, and then we took those and tried to, to port them to Windows, and see what it actually takes to port um, ROS nodes run either on Linux or on Windows. And um, so what we saw is actually that um, the amount of work what was needed to port a given node to Windows is actually pretty small. Um, and you will be amazed, and I think Lou, um, one of our main guy in the, um, uh, in the ROS development, um, and if you talk to him at Roscon, for example, um, he was actually showing you on the fly who, how quick it is to port a complete node, um, literally into in in minutes or hours, um, to turn them from a Linux distribution into a Windows. Uh, so we reached actually a situation where we can very easily port uh, nodes over from one platform to the other and also enable a lot of functionality which comes with Windows, of course. So that's why we provided some uh, some Microsoft nodes um, which are mainly focused on, <clears throat> on things which are coming through the Windows platform, of course, but also what coming through the Azure cloud. So one focus was everything around connecting the robot to the cloud and that's why we uh, provided the uh, Azure IoT Hub Connector ROS node, which means this is really the entry point of the system which connects, uh, gives you a, a secure way to communicate with cloud services. And IoT Hub is our main entry point for basically all our IoT-based services. On top of this, we, we still enable, or we also enable a lot of other uh, nodes which are required for um, low latency communication, for video com uh, video communication, for um, um, speech recognition, voice recognition, um, video um, analysis, and all these sorts. This can be all enabled through this connector, actually. So then, um, with the announcement of Connect uh, for Windows or Azure Connect for Windows. Uh, we also offered an, um, a ROS driver for this three-dimensional driver, which, of course, is not only available for Windows, it's also available for Linux. Um, but in combination with other services, like, for example, WinML, um, this, this depth camera makes most sense on, on, on Windows operating system. So, and this is the third node we actually um, offered right now, offering right now. It's a node which allows you to take any Onyx model um, and run this hardware accelerator related to the WinML stack. So you can actually accelerate um, your ML code with any GPU uh, based system. So, a little bit more detail. Um, as I said, the um, IoT Hub connector is the main entry point um, for IoT-based systems. And it's um, so the first step is really used to just get telemetry data uh, for <clears throat> um, from the robot to the cloud. It can be also adapted um, to other services, um, like even OPC UA um, compatible systems can work with um, dynamics, um, connected field services, all these uh, services we have on top of the cloud, which are not necessarily directly related to robots. Uh, but we now can enable and make the connection between those services. Um, this, this service is in, available as a sample in C++ and Python. We also have a dynamic reconfiguration sample, which is actually a preview for the whole deployment and configuration services uh, we offer for robots. 
Okay, the second um, the second one in more detail is the Connect um, ROS node, so the Azure Connect ROS node. Um, you can actually, if you remember, um, um, the lot of the, the huge community work uh, which was happening around uh, Connect, so the old Connect, uh, or the Connect for the Xbox. Um, uh, we enabled basically the same thing again now with um, the ROS node on. Uh, for the new Connect uh, for Azure. So I know the Connect for Azure is not uh, available right now in Germany. Uh, however, um, there are already shipments out there uh, in US and in um, other countries. And uh, we are coming beginning of next year uh, to have this available in Germany as well. So <clears throat> this, um, in general, um, the ROS node gives you everything what you actually expect from this, so the point cloud too, um, and um, depth and infrared camera uh, frames, so pretty much um, what you also have in the old Connect. However, you have much more, um, um, much more resolution. You have better resolution, um, better images, better, uh, better lighting. Everything is much better, and you have an IMU sensor and a TF TF model. Um, on this ROS as well. So um, the other thing is all about um, using services which are provided by Windows. Um, so this node is abstracting um, the the machine learning interface, so WinML uh, in Windows. Um, um, into an, an ROS node, and you can actually do um, everything, uh, or you can do object detection, vision detection, um, and uh, vision analytics um, inside a ROS node. And I have an example here, which is running this in Arvis. So it's just a person detector, and we showed this actually um, also on the build conference, uh, where we, for example, use this to detect objects and calculate ripping paths um, to an object from an um, robot arm. So that's uh, that's really um, one which enables you to have hardware accelerated um, machine learning models uh, and executes this on your uh, on your robot itself. So um, the ROS. As I said, um, the reason why we did um, ROS for Windows is mainly around uh, we were actually asked um, to enable ROS on um, on the Windows platform because of the um, manageability and the operating system, uh, which can be managed and um, uh, treated as a secure operating system by many of uh, your IT departments mostly. And um, <clears throat> to, to really have a deployment strategy uh, around this, it would be much easier um, to, to run Windows um, and enable ROS on Windows directly and not having constructs or situations where you have actually a Windows operating system running and then uh, running um, ROS, for example, in a VM, which is actually happening in a lot of industrial solutions right now. So, and that's why we are um, enabled this, and it turns out that actually very successful. So, um, as you see, we have already 200. So the numbers uh, are growing each day, but um, so this is the status from last month, actually. Uh, so we have 297 ROS packages enabled. Um, and uh, we have a lot of downloads, um, um, and um, almost 14,000 installs of ROS um, since July, when we announced this first. So, but for example, uh, probably our biggest contribution at the moment to the whole ROS world um, is what we are doing with uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, and the Video Studio Code extensions right now. Because this really enables you to have a very easy development environment for Windows uh, or for ROS, 
on Windows, uh, but of course it works on other operating systems as well. And um, <clears throat> even all the way down, you can run it on uh, Jetson Nano if you want. You can run it on, um, on even on a Raspberry Pi if you want, and work directly with. So I um, I can actually switch over to uh, a quick demo of this. So hold on, hopefully it works through Skype. Okay, so um, this is um, this is a normal tree. What you normally see if you have a standard installation of a turtle bot, for example. Um, so this is uh, showing now uh, ROS one, uh, but it works in the same way for ROS two as well. <clears throat> so um, you can um, edit your code, you can uh, build um, your system, you have um, syntax highlighting for um, for all the different code packages here or code types. And you see, uh, I have already started um, a ROS um, core here. And you see the starters, which, are, which ones are running, uh, which um, um, nodes are um, providing topics and services. And um, if you want, you can actually start directly out of um, out of Visual Studio Code the another node if you want. So then I go here, go to command, do the um, run a loss launch file. And you see um, all the different launch files you have available uh, within di different packages. And I go to one I have here. Um, hold on, uh, Ross, here we go. And for example, so this is our WinML tracker. Um, and you see here that the ROS um, um, node is actually launching. Uh, obvious, um, of course, because it actually tries to access my camera and it gives you a black frame. Um, it will probably not start all the required nodes, but you see here now they're coming a lot of nodes up. You see which is uh, starting and running and maybe um, also creating errors here. So that's that's just a very quick overview of how you actually start um, um, a ROS node on from Visual Studio Code. Um, and then another big feature is that we are really proud of is uh, uh, within Visual Studio Code, you can do all the nasty work to optimize your model uh, of your robot. So have a standard launch um, your DF file from Trottlebot here and just showing you um, how it looks like in um, in a simulation for example. So and then of course all the other um, all the other tools um, like Arvis, like um, RQT and what you normally use in a ROS environment um, are working as well as you um, know it before. Okay, switching back. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is what I'm uh, actually showed. Um, uh, it allows you a starting, stopping of ROS system. Um, it um, detects automatically our your ROS uh, workspace. Uh, we have the three preview for RDF models, um, and uh, it it also allows uh, to debug uh, C++ and Python code directly out of C's uh, Visual Studio environment. So there's more to come. Um, so um, we we will build in ROS2 support um, very soon. Um, it's available as a preview right now, so you can expect what we what you saw, just saw from um, in ROS2 in ROS1 uh, in the same way for ROS2 as well. Okay. So and um, to make everything very easy. Um, we have a lot of other tools around this. So first of all, uh, what you need to do is you can go to our ROS landing page, um, install either ROS1 or ROS2 um, directly from the website. Um, you 
<clears throat> of course, need to install the C++ toolchain. So this is normally goes through Visual Studio C++. And then you can just um, um, install the ROS extension for Visual Studio Code. And this is, um, and then you have a complete environment. And if you don't want to, if you just want to test it, um, you can actually go to um, an uh, ROS VM, what we have created. So um, you can go directly, go to uh, AKMS Azure Quick Start uh, and select the um, ROS VM for Windows. And this gives you the complete environment um, ready to get started uh, with ROS on Windows. Um, <clears throat> however, you, need, you also need to install then Visual Studio, of course, and, um, and all the other toolings. Uh, but it gives you an um, out-of-the-box environment. You can also run um, Gazebo and um, uh, RQT and Arvis and all the other tools on this thing. So it's actually designed for your complete simulation environment and then take it uh, directly to the robot if you want. Okay, so it's a very, very simple uh, way to get started into ROS for Windows. Um, so the, um, the next steps what we are planning to do is really um, focusing on ROS2, uh, on the large system, uh, porting nodes for ROS2. Um, and this is where we really need uh, your help. Um, and if you have ROS nodes which are difficult to port, or if you think that um, it's probably not running on, on Windows, we really would like to hear, hear it and um, to get an impression of what extensions we actually need, especially for those which are, are working on um, mapping, navigation, and these all sorts of things, which also involving maybe our 3D camera, the Azure um, Connect for Windows. Then, of course, uh, Everything what we do in terms of um, the ROS nodes we are building, as long they are not really depending on Windows only features, like for example WinML, um, uh, we're building everything cross platform, right? So and everything, um, also all the tooling, um, the deployment tools, everything what we are building there, it's all cross platform, and we want to. Um, make sure that this is working on um, on Linux and Windows and maybe other platforms as well. And then, of course, uh, more visual visualization tools. Uh, we are uh, working with different simulators. Um, we we may do a lot of improvement there. Um, and then uh, finally, and this is probably one of the most important thing, uh, we want to make sure that um, <clears throat> by using Windows. Um, or Linux that you can actually deploy and build and secure your robot um, in your DevOps workflow and um, really make it make sure that you um, build a robot which is securely connected to the cloud if it's disconnected to the cloud. Okay, and um, so that's the, the final statement, call to action. Um, I really would like if you all go to this uh, website and just try it out and give us feedback um, on um, Visual Studio Code, on, um, on um, the robot operating system as well. Um, what do you think about ROS on Windows? Um, and if you have a project where you think um, it makes sense um, to use ROS on Windows for whatever reason. Um, please contact us, and um, I think we will provide the uh, contact information later, right? Okay, that's for me. Good. So thank you for the talk.